Good morning. Well, what a gorgeous day we're having today. Well, it's gorgeous here on my end when I make the recording. Hopefully it's gorgeous on your end when you are listening to it. We've been working on the multiplication principle and the division principle. One place where you might see them in use is when we are working with Ohm's law and electrical power. So this lesson is specifically dealing with those principles. Let's start by talking about Ohm's law. So when we work with electricity, we have three types of terms. We have the current, which is given to us by a capital I, measured in amperes. Hang on a second. There, I forgot to turn my pen on. Amperes, A-M-P-E-R-E-S. We don't usually call them amperes because we're rather lazy. We tend to abbreviate these as amps. And of course, the symbol for amps is a capital A. Then we have the electrical voltage, which in our formulas is written as E, but electrical voltage is measured in volts. And the abbreviation for volts, of course, is AV. And then we have the resistance. So that is abbreviated with R. It is measured in ohms. And the symbol looks like this. And this is the Greek letter. Omega. All right, so we have a lot of different letters and abbreviations for units floating around. What do we know? Ohm's law relates the current, the electrical voltage, and the resistance by the formula I times R equals E. So if we put this into words, we would say the current, that's I, multiplied by the resistance, that's our R, is equal to the electrical voltage. If you were looking at the units, then we might say amps multiplied by ohms is equal to volts. And if you were looking at the symbol for the units, we would of course have amps A for amps and omega for ohms equal to V for volts. Let's look at an example. So we have a simple circuit where a current of 2 amps flows through a resistance of 15 ohms and we would like to find the voltage. Later on we'll deal with circuits that have more than one resistance and things like transformers and stuff like that. But for right now, very simple circuit. And of course we have Ohm's law, I times R is equal to E. So all we're going to do is fill in values inside the formula where they belong. The current is two amps, so I has a value of two. The resistance is 15 ohms, so R has a value of 15. And the voltage is unknown. All right, so this one is just a straight multiplication. Two times 15 is 30, 30 is equal to E. And when it comes time to talk about the solution, we won't forget the units that this is a voltage of 30 volts. All right, fairly straightforward. Let's try another one. Before we get to an actual second example, let's talk about different ways that you might see Ohm's law. We can rewrite the equation I times R equal to E in an equivalent way by using the division property. And you remember that the division property says we can take two sides of an equation, divide by the same amount, and the new equation is true. We've maintained equality. So let's look at what happens if we take the Ohm's law equation and divide both sides by I. So we're dividing both sides by the current. On the left-hand side of the equation, I divided by I is just 1. That leaves us with R all by itself. On the right-hand side of the equation, E divided by I, well, we don't know what those are, so we just have to leave it sort of the way it is. So you could say that the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current.
or we could take the Ohm's Law equation and we could divide both sides of it by R. So we'll divide by the resistance on either side. Just like before, R divided by R gives us 1, which leaves us with I all alone on the left-hand side. And the right-hand side is now a fraction of E divided by R. So the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So when you're reading books, you might see these three different versions of Ohm's Law. And you might think it's necessary to memorize them all. And if you can, or if you like to, there's no problem with that at all. But we really only need one version of this. And then we can use either the multiplication property of equality or the division property of equality to get where we want to know. Me personally, I like this one. Because then I'm always either working with multiplication or just dividing both sides to find what I need. So here's what I mean. The resistance in a simple 120 volt circuit is 20 ohms. We would like to find the current. So we start off with Ohm's law. I times R is equal to E. Fill in the things that we know. Do we know the current? Well, no, that's the thing that's unknown. So I is going to stay as part of our formula. But we know that the resistance is 20 ohms. So we'll fill in 20 for R. And the voltage is 120 volts. Our job is to find the current. I is being multiplied by 20, so we will undo the multiplication by dividing both sides of the equation by 20. Of course, on the right-hand side, 20 divided by 20 is just 1. And I is left all by itself. Oops, sorry, I guess that's the left-hand side, isn't it? 20, sorry, 120 divided by 20 gives us 6. So in the end, we find that the current is 6 amps. And that original version of Ohm's Law that we had, I times R is equal to E, served us just fine. And it wasn't a real big deal to divide both sides by 20 and figure out what I was. I didn't have to use some other version of the formula to find I. All right, let's try again. Let's say our la third example. We have a current of 4 amps flowing through a simple 18 volt circuit. We would like to know the resistance in the circuit. And just like before, we start off with Ohm's Law. I times R is equal to E. And we fill in everything that we know. So I, that's the current, is worth 4. R, we don't know, so we just leave it alone, is equal to the voltage, which is 18. To get R by itself, we have to undo this multiplication. So we will divide on both sides of the equation by 4. On the left-hand side, 4 divided by 4 is just 1. And that leaves R all by itself. On the right-hand side, 18 divided by 4 is 4.5. So the resistance in the circuit is 4.5. And, and of course, those units are ohms. Fairly easy, huh? We just need the one formula, I times R is equal to E. A closely related topic is that of electrical power. So power is thought of as the rate of doing work, or the rate of using energy. Engines and motors are usually rated in horsepower, but electrical power is measured in watts. And if we have a lot of watts, then we measure them in kilowatts. One horsepower is equal to 746 watts, just in case you wanted to know. But when we're talking about a circuit, one watt is the power used when one amp of current flows through a potential difference of one volt. So for us, what that means is that watts is equal to volts times amps. If we let P stand for power, right, power is measured in watts. Electrical voltage, that's the E. And of course, the current, that's the I. So we have P is equal to E times I. Just like before, that's really all the formula that we need. There are other ways to represent this equation. We could say that um, E is equal to P divided by I, or I is equal to P divided by E. But really, all we need is this particular version of the formula. So let's see what we can do. We have a 9-volt battery in a simple circuit producing a current of 1.5 amps. 
how much power is being delivered by the battery. Well, we start with our power equation. P is equal to E times I. So P, well, I don't know that. That's the unknown. We'll leave that alone, is equal to, we need uh, E, the electrical voltage, and that is 9, multiplied by I, which is the current, 1.5. So this one's a straight multiplication. P is equal to 18 and a half. Don't forget the units. When we get done, these are 13 and a half watts. All right, let's try another one here. A 10,000 BTU window air conditioner uses a current of 24.4 amps and plugs into a 120 volt outlet. We'd like to know about the power that the air conditioner is consuming. So P is equal to E times I. Let's fill in what we know. We don't know P because that's what we're looking for. Um, e, that would be the electrical voltage. That is 120 multiplied by the amperage, 24.4. And right about now, you're probably asking me, hey, what about this 10,000 BTU thing here? Well, that's just a description of the air conditioner. Uh, it just happens to be a number. Just because the number is sitting in the problem doesn't mean we have to use it. Right? P is equal to E times I, and those are the only two values that we need. So here, we just need to multiply. P is equal to, let's see, 120 multiplied by 24.4 gives us 2,928. And just like before, P is equal to 2,928. Don't forget the units. These are watts. OK. Let's see here. One last example. A 24 volt power supply is used in a circuit with 20 ohms of resistance. We would like to know the total power of the circuit. All right, well, what do we have? We have the power equation, P is equal to E times I. So we know that the power, let's write this down, power is equal to the volts multiplied by the amps. All right, well, let's see what we know. We know uh, the volts are 24. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything about amps. Does this mean we can't use the equation or can't solve the problem? Well, nope, that doesn't mean that at all. How else can we find amps? We can come over here and use Ohm's law. So with Ohm's law, we know that I times R is equal to E. And we have, hmm, what do we have? We have resistance, we've got 20 ohms there, and we have E, we've got the voltage. We could figure out I, which of course are the amps that we need. So I we don't know, we're trying to figure out those amps, but we know that the resistance is 20 ohms, and we know that that's going to equal the electrical voltage, which is 24 volts. All right, so I is being multiplied by 20. Undo the multiplication by dividing by 20. What we do on one side, we have to do to the other. On the left-hand side, 20 divided by 20 is 1. That leaves I all by itself. On the right-hand side, we do the division. 24 divided by 20 is 1.2. And these, of course, are 1.2, and those are amps. That's the electrical current. Now we can come back over here into our power equation and see what we know. We have 24 volts multiplied by the 1.2 amps, and that should give us the power. Ah, nice straightforward multiplication. 24 multiplied by 1.2 is 28.8, and that's our value for P. So what's the solution? Well, let's see. P is equal to, right, we're trying to find the total power of the circuit, 28.8, and of course those units are watts. All right, good luck with your homework, and we'll be talking to you soon. Take care, enjoy the day.